Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, April the 20th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and yes, you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from mainstream media where I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and on top of that market analysis. Well, in these daily market commentaries, I do that same thing, but I layer on top of that some option strategies that I find based on that economic, geopolitical and market analysis. And I have specific rules for every single option strategy, when, where, and why we would want to put those on based on an assumption we come up with. So please watch those webinars because I go into a little bit more detail into how to build out those strategies according to some of those rules or guidelines. In the daily market commentaries, I talk about it briefly, but probably not to the extent that you will get on those webinars. So check those out as well. All right. So, uh, as we usually start out with economic data, it being a Monday, we don't really have a whole lot. It looks like in New York, uh, the coronavirus kind of is starting to tip to the downside. It may have seen its plateau or the peak. So uh, it looks like the quarantine stuff has mitigated some of that um, spreading and we're starting to maybe see uh, this start to come off a little bit. All right, so with the overall markets, let's talk about crude oil right now. Crude oil is down $2 on the day. Now, something to note here, these are the futures, but um, what this is is light sweet crude and it is trading around $22. If you look at WTI, which is basically uh, it's West Texas inter, uh, uh, intermediary, that is trading around $10. They usually run right in line with one another. So if we're looking at what that is being at the, uh, what they're uh, paying for a barrel there, that leads us to believe that crude oil here is a little bit overpriced. Cause usually, like I said, they run around uh, very close to, closely to one another. On Friday, it was trading around $18.50. Last I checked on WTI, it was $10.30. So much lower than this, leading one to believe that these are overpriced a little bit and it's probably uh, going to see some downside. You know, I talked about this last week that I don't think that we've seen capitulation really happen here in crude oil here, with the, which is forward slash CL, the futures at this, uh, that we trade for um, forward guidance there. That, looks like to me it has some downside in its near future. All right, so crude oil coming off a little bit like we already talked about. WTI really just getting slammed today. Gold futures starting to get a little bit of a push to the upside back into the 1700 handle. We talked about, I think it's gonna try and support that 1700 despite the fact that we settled below that on Friday. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit of momentum here with the government really printing uh, money the way it is. Gold futures is a dollar denominated product. That weakening dollar should push gold futures a little bit higher. I don't have a position in there, so um, but I do believe it's going to kind of sustain that. All right, bonds back up in the 180 handle. And I've talked about this. Anytime we start dipping below that 180 handle, you're going to start seeing the government come in and really start to buy some bonds at that level and support these lower interest rates really is what's happening because we talked about this as well. If in, or if price goes higher, that means interest rates go down. They are uh, inversely correlated to the price there. All right, so bonds are back in the 180 handle. We've got the VIX spiking just a little bit, but you can see it is off of the highs after testing that 50-day moving average. And that's because we're seeing a nice comeback here in the equities from the uh, lows we saw off uh, the overnight and basically opening up a lot lower as well. Market really slammed down uh, and starting to see a bit of a rebound. As a matter of fact, last I checked, NASDAQ was in positive territory. So uh, Dow Jones only down 200 points on the day after at one point you can see the low was about 300 points lower than this. So, uh, you know, we were down over 500 points earlier today. Uh, NASDAQ is in positive territory by about 20 points here. Something uh, I wanted to point out as well, these topping were looking very toppy uh, and confirmation 
this morning, it looked like we were creating a topping pattern looking to roll back over. I don't know that we're out of the woods yet, but uh, to the upside, you know, we are, uh, at, at this point, you guys, we are positive on the year, you can see, uh, with the chart here. So back in December, you can see that's where we were. So we are just in positive territory for the year with this rebound. So that's kind of pretty surprising to see, especially with 20 million people unemployed right now uh, in the in March and April, becoming unemployed in March and April. All right, E-mini S&Ps in negative territory by about 14 points. Again, this is the chart pattern I was talking about, looking like it was a bit of a topping pattern there. And then today with the slam, it was uh, looking like we were confirming that and starting to roll back over, uh, maybe and test the value area low here in E-mini S&Ps. NASDAQ go back down to the point of control. Uh, but right now, E-mini S&Ps have been lagging just a little bit. Sorry about that. I had to yell at a dog there for a moment. Um, and uh, let's talk about a couple of things that I've got going on here coming up. Uh, as you can see, the overnight started to get a bit of a rally here coming into today. Not a whole lot to see. It's pretty quiet for the most part. But some things that I wanted to talk about was these trades that I have uh, had on for a, quite some time since basically this coronavirus started. If you guys remember, I back uh, in... Uh, what was it? basically February, I started selling some puts in MasterCard. And this obviously was before the whole coronavirus thing came out. And I've gotten put that stock on the sell off. So uh, originally I got put some stock at uh, $200.70. I did that at a couple of different tranches. So I collected about uh, $3 there. And then when the market really sold off, I got put those stocks at 270. So I did some dollar cost averaging, continued to uh, be mechanical and lower my overall cost basis, sold the 215 puts in there for, uh, what was it, $4.10. So um, I got put that stock as well, right? So now my break even is somewhere right around from 270 to uh, 215, was somewhere right around 245, okay? Um, and I had collected and that's not even taking into account that I had collected over $7 on these trades, right? That lowers my overall cost basis again. Well, uh, I had sold some 300 calls in there for um, $2.16. Those expired for about 16 cents or I took those off when they were around 16 cents. Um, so lowering my cost basis again by another $2. So now I've lowered my overall cost basis by $10 just in a matter of... Uh, a couple of months, or actually just one month for the most part. Um, so nice job lowering overall cost basis, staying mechanical with these trades. That's what we should be doing in a portfolio, especially times like this. Um, and I've talked about that probably till I'm blue in the face. One thing I did do then was roll those 300 calls when they were basically worthless down to the 245 calls uh, for about um, a dollar and 77 cents. So Again, lowering my overall cost basis again. So now over $10 lowering that cost basis. Uh, well, those 245 calls, as you can see, got called, I uh, got some of my, a third of my position called away from me in MasterCard uh, on Friday. So lighten my position up. It did bring up my cost basis a little bit, or my average uh, of what I own these um, stocks just a little bit, but. Keep in mind, I have still lowered my overall cost basis uh, by over $11 now at this point. So what I have on is, uh, um, you know, two thirds of that original position. I haven't done anything as of right now because you can see we had uh, earnings coming out for MasterCard. So I didn't, I don't really like to sell um, those stocks or sell those uh, options in that uh earnings cycle because I'm really a little bit iffy on how MasterCard is going to do with all of this. Yes, I think that everybody is buying and putting stuff on credit cards because, you know, uh, they're at home buying online or using it for Netflix and stuff like that. So that's going to drive their overall usage. 
but I am worried a little bit about uh, the default rates that they're going to be seeing from some of these people that might be getting unemployed. So uh, I still like MasterCard for the upside, but I am a little concerned, so I'm not really going to uh, jump on that right away. And then in uh, Microsoft, we talked about this. I got uh, some of my stock called away from me early on last week before the expiration, but um, I have done a similar uh, type of situation here with this one. Back in, uh, what was it, February, I had sold some uh, puts in there at the 160 level. Uh, I obviously got put those stock there. Um, I also sold some puts at the 126 level and got those stocks put to me. So um, lowering my overall cost basis on that from, um, you know, uh, $4 for the most part on those two different trades there. And I uh, averaged my price down a little bit, you know, 160 and 125 or uh, 126 puts. Um, so lowering my overall cost basis to land somewhere in and around that, you know, one uh, off the top of my head, about a buck 40 or something, buck 43 or something. Um, and I've sold some calls in there uh, at the 185 level and those uh, for 55 cents, took those off for 16 and sold some uh, 160 calls in there. That's where I got, um, got a third of my position called away from me at the 160 level. So lightened up some of my position where I bought those at a scratch, right? I mean, I was long at 160 um, and scratched it at 160, got some of those called away from me. But in the meantime, I lowered my overall cost basis, right? Continuously staying mechanical, lightened up my position a little bit uh, in Microsoft. And remember, I also sold the 195 calls last week on the uh, 15th. And the reason why, if we get up there to the all-time 52-week highs or those 52-week highs, I'd be happy to lighten my position up just a little bit. Now, with Microsoft, I think I'm out of the woods on the downside with this one because I've talked about this in the daily market commentaries as well as my market assumption uh, in Microsoft is that people are building out their home offices and Microsoft is going to see uh, a lot of their products fly off the shelf in that type of situation. Um, now that they're out of that office, they need to have a new office. So uh, I went in and today sold some 155 puts in there. Wanna try and do uh, a little bit more Dollar cost averaging, if I get a pullback on that earnings, um, I wanna add some more to that position. And if I don't get it, then I'm just lowering my cost basis again. So unlike with MasterCard, um, I don't wanna get involved in that earnings. With Microsoft, uh, I'm pretty solid on my assumption there and want to take advantage of some of this theta decay and that volatility contraction if um, the market spikes higher. All right, so that's all I've got going on right now. So um, that's about it. We do need to talk about this disclaimer. Please go over this. We are an educational company. None of these trades that I've talked about are a recommendation for you guys to buy or sell. I am not about giving trade recommendations. I don't like the herd mentality. So please take a moment to go over this. And if you can't take that, take it easy.